What's up guys, my name is Brandon and we are less than two weeks away from seeing iOS 15 unveiled at Apple's annual Worldwide Developers Conference, which takes place on June 7th this year. And the leaks for iOS 15 have been pretty limited this year. We have a lot less leaks this year than we had last year for iOS 14, but we do have some additional details on what we could be seeing in a couple of weeks with the next major version of iOS that is iOS 15. So last month, I did bring you guys a video detailing some major iOS 15 leaks that came courtesy of Bloomberg, who does have an excellent track record with Apple leaks. And if you guys missed that video, or if you're just new here, that will be linked up in the cards and down in the description below. But today we're sharing more leaks about iOS 15. Now these are coming from a source that is not quite as credible as Bloomberg, of course, this is actually a new source but we also have some details that came actually from Apple themselves. So we have a little bit to talk about in this video. So let's just go ahead and jump in. So first let's talk about the leaks that were posted on Twitter by Connor Jewis. Now, these weren't screenshots or anything. He kind of just posted this tweet right here, which shows some of the changes we might be seeing. Now, first of all, before we even talk about these, this is, you know, somebody who has never really leaked anything before. So it's, you know, unknown as to if he's actually legit or not. So take everything with a grain of salt that he posts here. However, you know, not everything on here is completely original. We've heard a lot of these things already before from Mark Gurman and Bloomberg and other sources as well. But anyways, First, he mentions tweaks to the dark mode UI. So I'm guessing that this could mean like maybe we can tweak what apps will go into dark mode when the global toggle is on. So like if we go into our control center here and turn on dark mode from the control center right here, you know, maybe that doesn't darken every single application. Maybe if we go into our settings here and then go like to our display and brightness and then right here, maybe under automatic, we have another section that maybe says like, you know, customize or you could choose which applications go into a dark mode and which ones go into a light mode. So like if I was in light mode, maybe some apps would still, you know, populate in dark mode because I have that selected there. And same with if I go into dark mode, maybe, you know, applications, some applications that I choose will still be in light mode when the whole, you know, UI is in dark mode. So I'm guessing maybe we'll see something like that. I'm not too sure. There's really no expansion there on that, but it looks like we could be seeing a tweak to the overall dark mode UI. We also get mention of the messages app getting some additional new features. And this is something we've been hearing about for a while now. So this isn't actually anything new and Mark Gurman already reported on this last month as well. But as for the specifics, last year, a lot of leaked messages features were kind of leaked out and everyone thought they were coming in iOS 14, but it looks like they could be coming in iOS 15 instead. And some of these features include the ability to unsend messages, the ability to edit messages after they're sent and other features to try to more so compete with applications like WhatsApp. Because if you remember last month, German reported that Apple is wanting iMessage to be more like a social network than just a messaging app for iPhone users. So it'll be interesting to see what Apple does with messages, but they definitely have big plans for that. And it seems like the big features and the big plans they had, you know, last year were kind of scrapped and maybe put into iOS 15 because maybe they weren't ready last year. Now, the next thing that's mentioned is pretty interesting. So he says here, food tracking and other health features are coming to iOS 15 as well. And aside from the dark mode UI tweaks, we really haven't heard anything about food tracking coming to iOS. So this is a pretty interesting one and he doesn't give us any additional information, but the website iMore does. So they also have a source who knows a thing or two about iOS 15. And they said this, the food tracking in the iOS 15 health app is akin to something users might already be familiar with, my fitness pal so if you guys don't know what my fitness pal is it is a great application i've been using this literally since i was like a teenager you know over a decade ago and this is a great way to track your calories your protein all of that and you have charts you have diaries you can pull in nutritional data from you know other websites and just other sources it's a great application and you know obviously apple's going to try to compete with that but it may just be in the health application according to you know these rumors here so maybe when we go like to browse right here it will probably just have its own section that just says food tracking somewhere in here and it's going to be interesting to see if apple is actually working with somebody like my fitness pal to pull in all of that nutritional data from these different foods so we'll have to wait and see on that but this actually seems very interesting and it's definitely something that i personally will use but it just depends on how well you know it's made and obviously since it's in the health application instantly you know it's going to be on everybody's iphone which will be a big pro for apple and then we also get mention of new notification settings and a new lock screen look which were also reported on by mark german last month and i more actually they elaborated a little bit more on the ios 15 lock screen by saying this the new look is complication based 
and that notifications will be grouped differently to how they are in iOS 14. And as you can see in this concept video from Nicholas Gigo, you can see what the complication focused lock screen could look like with iOS 15. And I think this will help make things a lot simpler and kind of less clunky on the lock screen. Now it's hard to predict, you know, what Apple is going to do with the notification grouping, but this is something I'm sure everyone is hoping for because the way notifications are grouped now isn't bad per se, but it's also not great. I know a lot of people kind of complain about the way that notifications show up in the notification center here. So we will probably see a change to this as well. And as for the notification customization, iMore's source confirms what German said as well, mentioning that it will include the ability to configure how notifications work based on specific scenarios. So, you know, German said that this feature will allow us to set different notification preferences, such as if the phone makes a sound or not, depending on their current status. So we may have more than just like a do not disturb status with iOS 15. There may be multiple different statuses that you can set and that will, you know, have an impact on how your notifications come through on your phone. And German said that the enhancement will come in the form of a new menu that lets users select if they are driving, working, sleeping, or custom categories of their choosing. The menu will be shown on the updated lock screen and in control center. So like I said, it could be maybe just like a long press on do not disturb. And then you'll have the option to maybe change it from like do not disturb to you're working or sleeping or whatever else you have set. And you can do that right there. So that is a possibility. And there's probably also going to be something inside of the whole notifications panel right here as well. So I'm really looking forward to the new lock screen and these customization settings. They are not sexy features, but they are things that should greatly enhance your day-to-day -day usage and really going to help you customize your whole experience and how you use your iPhone and iOS. Now, as for the details that Apple themselves shared, they released this press release last week that included a look at some of the upcoming accessibility features. And Apple didn't come out and specifically say that these features are coming in iOS 15, but they did say it's coming later this year, which does kind of indicate that these are coming with iOS 15 later on this year. And the first one is this right here, which is assistive touch for Apple Watch. And this is pretty interesting. And this is going to allow you to move and make gestures with your hand to perform actions on the Apple Watch. And Apple actually has a demo here on this press release and it shows the different type of gestures that you could do. And it's really interesting because it uses, you know, the built-in motion sensors like the gyroscope and the accelerometer along with machine learning on device. So it's really interesting and that will definitely be a pretty big feature when it does get unveiled. Apple also mentions things like eye tracking for iPad OS, additional voiceover features that will allow you to hear more detail about images, support for new bi-directional hearing aids, and finally, my favorite feature from this list, background sounds. Apple says, quote, we're introducing new background sounds to help minimize distractions and help users focus, stay calm, or rest. Balanced, bright, or dark noise, as well as ocean, rain, or stream sounds continuously play in the background to mask unwanted environmental or external noise, and the sounds mix into or duck under other audio and system sounds. So that is awesome. That is definitely something I will use because I mentioned this in other videos, but it's really nice to use sounds to go to sleep. It really does help a lot of people go to sleep better. And a lot of people can't sleep without sounds going on, you know, from their phone. So it's great to see Apple is actually implementing this straight into iOS. And the fact that we won't have to rely on other applications for that is going to be great. And you can see Apple share screenshots here of what this will look like inside of the settings on your iPhone. So we have the background sounds toggle right there. We have sound, we have volume, and then we have volume with media. So you could also use this when other media is playing and you could change the volume slider right there to whatever you would like. And you can actually see there, it actually shows the number as well. So I don't know if that's gonna be new in iOS 15 as well for everything, or if it's just for background sounds, but it says 10 to indicate 10% for the volume there. So that's a little interesting tidbit I noticed. And then also when you click on sound, you can see all the sounds that will be included with this feature, balanced noise, bright noise, dark noise, ocean, rain, and stream. And then at the bottom, Apple briefly mentions three additional features coming to iOS later this year as well. And that is sound actions for switch control, new display and text size settings, and more Memoji customizations. So those are just some additional iOS 15 features that we could expect to see later this year. And I'm pretty sure it's the first time, like I said earlier, the first time that Apple posted some of the upcoming features ahead of the Worldwide Developers Conference, like just a couple of weeks, a few weeks before the actual conference, which does, you know, kind of lead us to believe that this is going to be a jam-packed WWDC. And speaking of the conference, Apple did also publish the schedule 
for this WWDC. And you can see here, it says Apple's all online worldwide developers conference kicks off on June 7th with keynote address. And you can see here, if we go down, we do have confirmation that June 7th at 10 a.m. Pacific is when we will see iOS 15, watchOS 8, you know, the new version of Mac OS, tvOS, HomePod OS, and maybe even something else this year, we will see right there. And I will be live streaming that here on YouTube. So definitely make sure you are there on June 7th at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can read more about this schedule right here as well. Like we have the Platform State of the Union, the Apple Design Awards, access to experts. We also have something new here, which is pavilions. And you can see it's pavilions provide an easy way for developers to explore relevant sessions, labs, and special activities for a given topic. So pretty interesting there. I will have all of this linked in the description below if you want to read up more on it. But Apple did confirm the date, which we pretty much already knew, but they did confirm it just recently in a press release. So those are the latest iOS 15 leaks. Now there's also word on the street that a new MacBook Pro is going to be announced at this event as well. So we'll see if that happens. And if you guys want a detailed video about that M1X or M2 MacBook Pro about the leaks, if you want you know, a roundup of that, let me know in a comment down below. But it'll be really interesting to see if we actually get that at this conference because hardware is pretty rare to be released at WWDC. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video and if you're looking forward to iOS 15, make sure you hit that like button and also make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss all of my very detailed coverage I have coming on iOS 15, just like I did for iOS 14 since day one. And I will be live streaming again here on the channel right once iOS 15 gets unveiled. I'll be going over all of the new features with you guys in that live streaming. It's always really fun. We're always discovering new features together. It's just always a good time. But anyways, guys, yeah, thanks again for watching the video and I will see you soon.